Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Design With Me, the show where I take you behind the scenes on projects I've worked on in an attempt to demystify the design process. You know, design is a job, and with this format, I'm trying to roll back some of that magic and actually show you the steps that's involved in making things, using the opportunity to dive into particular aspects of the design process. In this episode, I've got a fantastic project lined up, which I think is very much a classic type of project for me. So let's take a look. So as usual, this project starts with me getting an email. The email is actually from a previous client of mine. I did his iOS app icon many years ago, and he's now about to launch a major new version of his app. The app is called Notes HD. And one of the key features in this new version is that it combines text notes and drawings beautifully. And while he and his users have liked the original icon for years, they kind of wanted a new icon to reflect some of these changes. Now, this is an interesting project for many reasons. First of all, I just really love making app icons. I think it's everything that's awesome about the creative process condensed and distilled into uh, making this little gem, right? The whole result needs to be there in the 1024 by 1024 pixel canvas. It needs to scale well, it needs to look great in many different contexts, and it needs to communicate so much, right? So I've said it many times before, but I'm a, I am just a, a massive fan of making app icons. It is pretty much one of my favorite creative processes. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, this is interesting because it is an old project, a project that we did many years ago, that we get to take in again and look at it with fresh eyes. It's not always you get to do a second take like that years after. Trends have changed and hopefully I, am, as a designer, have grown and can make something that I feel is more in line with, with the sort of stuff that I do today. So I was thrilled when I got this project. It is just a lot of fun. On the last episode of Design With Me, I spent some time discussing the conceptual phases, all the initial work that I go through with my clients. And if you haven't seen that, you can go ahead and watch that right here. Great. Today, I want to continue talking about the conceptual phase, but home in on a specific aspect of the conceptual phase, which is sometimes overlooked and uh, which I know for a fact that many designers, including myself for the first couple of years, dread, and that is the role of sketching. So let's just talk about that for a little while. First of all, I want to completely debunk a myth. You do not have to be good at drawing to make sketching work for you as a tool in the creative process. You need to understand that right off the bat. While I've always loved drawing, I personally don't consider myself a great illustrator. And it took me years to find the right place for sketches in my creative process because I never really felt like they were pretty enough to actually show to clients. And I'm sure that many of you feel the same. I've, I've talked to countless of designers who, who has this notion that they're not very good at drawing, so they don't use sketching that much. And I want to try to make the argument for you to do sketches anyways, because the point of sketches isn't to make something look pretty. It's to have a very low fidelity prototype or mock-up of what it is that you have in your mind's eye. In this project, I went through the usual email exchange with the client that I discussed in the last episode. I asked the right questions. Luckily, I've worked with this client before, so he already had ideas up front and we had good rapport. And we pretty quickly homed in on the fact that the most distinguished feature of, of this new version of Notes was the ability to combine texts and drawings easily and beautifully. So we wanted to make that a central pivot point in the conceptual phase. So going from there, I started sketching, trying to figure out what a new and updated concept for notes would look like. And sketching can be a tricky thing for designers, right? Because it's the first time that you take whatever's in your mind and you put something on paper. And I think there's this very human need to make it look nice. To already there meet the client with some sort of expectation that you're doing a great job already. But I think that the best clients understand that this is just your way of bridging the gap between what's in your mind and what they can see. So sketching 
doesn't actually have to be very pretty. In fact, I actually think that overly complicated sketches or really detailed sketches usually completely fails to communicate what it is you want it to communicate, which is this very low fidelity mock-up of your idea. Most of the times I just use sketching as talking points. I'll send a few sketches and I'll have a couple of paragraphs just detailing uh, my ideas behind that sketch. And this sketch, it might not look very pretty, but together with the text combined, they kind of give this idea of what it is that this is eventually going to turn into. So I really want to emphasize that you want your sketches to be fairly low quality. It's all about just communicating the essence of your idea. It's not about starting to render something. You can always fill that in with words or explanations. You need to lay out the concept that you're doing. Uh, in, in my case, I, I spend a lot of time just kind of showing the composition of things, the elements in there. And I might even like provide pictorial references next to the sketch just to remove the sketch from anything that nearly resembles something that would look like the final product. It's the whole job of the sketch to be this non-controversial piece that will get the, the ball rolling and the ideas going, right? So the more time you sink into a sketch, the further away you kind of get from that goal. I've tried many different variations on sketches. I've even tried doing sketches in Photoshop or, or at least higher fidelity mock-ups of my ideas. And it's dangerous because if a client sees a sketch that isn't very pretty or at least very bare bones, he or she is much more likely to understand that this is very preliminary work. We're just discussing the conceptual outlines of it. But as soon as you start adding complexity and details and realism and inching your way closer to what would be a final product, people start getting curious about colors and the actual rendering and the methods. And so essentially what I'm saying is if your sketches are too perfect or too close to the final product, it actually kind of blurs that line or the whole point of the, the, the sketch, which is to have this phase where you can freely and inexpensively discover and explore these different concepts. I hope that makes sense. So sketching is a massively important tool in the creative process. It is your way of inexpensively discovering and exploring concepts and throwing them at the client and see what sticks and what doesn't stick. And maybe what you draw by hand will trigger some sort of idea or response from your client and that will in turn roll into the next set of sketches so that you can quite quickly get to the best possible concept. The more time you spend on sketches, the fewer concepts you get to explore and you risk the dangers that I just discussed about the client actually starting to have other questions about the actual rendering and the specifics of the sketch. And also, if you don't sketch, you don't get to use this wonderful tool uh, that will bridge this connection between whatever you have in your mind's eye and whatever the client is seeing and reading. So I cannot emphasize it enough. Sketching is really important. It's taken me many years to, to use it the way that I use it today. I'm not saying it's the only way to use it, but I know many designers who refrain from sketching, either because they're just not very confident in their drawing skills uh, or some other excuse. But I hope it makes sense that that is missing the point. Sketch freely. It does not matter how ugly your hand drawing is. You need to use that tool to bridge the gap between what you have in your mind's eye and what the client is actually reading and understanding. And if you use it properly, you will much quicker and more inexpensively get to the right concept. So sketch. So in this project, we went through a lot of different sketches to figure out what would the right concept look like. And we constantly homed around this idea of showing a pen and a curvature or lines of some sort, kind of mimicking the fusion of drawing and writing. And we were also trying to pay tribute to the old app icon, which uh, while very skeuomorphic and glowing, featured a very iconic pen that the users have come to love. So in these sketches, we really tried to fuse this idea of bringing the pen into the present <laughs> from the old icon and merging it somehow with this idea of drawing and how those two things meshes together in a note-taking app. I want to add one last thing. Sometimes when you take on a project, almost from the beginning, you kind of have an idea of what the result will look like, right? Uh, in this case, I had no idea. And once we jump into Photoshop in a minute, while we quickly home in on the concept, you'll see me trying out 
different colors and there's a lot of back and forth between me and the client just trying to figure out what would actually be the best look balancing what came before with the direction that we're trying to head into as usual i've made a little time lapse of the many days i spent in photoshop working on this and i'll speed things up a little bit and focus on things that i think is relevant for the design process so let's take a look the first thing I'll do is I'll bring the sketch into Photoshop and start drawing on top of the sketch to create the core geometric components that the objects consist of. Essentially what we want is a cleaner vector version of the pen, so I'm tracing my own sketch to create that object. And once we're done with that, I'll take it into my app icon template, one of the resources that you can get from appicontemplate.com. I like to work in the 1024 by 1024 pixel canvas. Uh, it gives a sense of scale, and you can uh, you can see me adjusting the, the, the size and composition of it in relation to the icon grid. This is also where I make minor adjustments to the very rough vectors we got from the sketch, uh, just making little tweaks here and there to make it appear a little more like I imagined. So once we have the core shapes of the concept in place and inside the app icon template, I'll start to play around with the actual rendering. I'll start to play around with the textures, with lighting, with colors, and you'll see me bring in real life textures. I like to bring a little bit of the real world into Photoshop to create this hybrid between realism and this cartoony world. I'm masking these textures onto the shapes and playing around with the parameters of it. And I'm doing a lot of detailing here. I'm playing around with lighting. I'm making smaller tweaks. I'm essentially just exploring this object, putting it into the scene and, and figuring out how the light would hit the different materials and, and how the object would appear under different circumstances. Notice my heavy use of gradients and how I really just go in there and tweak and tweak and tweak until I'm satisfied with the way they appear. And I think it's pretty obvious from watching this that a central theme of this rendering is, is how detailed do we make this pen, right? There's very much a trend and a pressure to make everything simple and flat and as minimalistic as possible. And I think what you're watching here is my attempt at bridging that gap, creating something that still feels very straightforward and quite simple in its nature, but has some of that physicality, a little bit of that 3D that makes it pop. And here you see me struggling with the detailing of this little clip-on thing on top of the pen. It's kind of like a last vest of the old icon and here you see it disappear I simply decide that it's it's not needed to make this look like a pen and it kind of streamlines the whole shape a little bit more notice how I save things out to the main document and see how it renders across the different sizes so that when I make changes like that I'm sure that it'll actually look neat in the smaller sizes too next up is the rendering of these abstract half circles that sits around the pen you'll see me doing a little bit of masking here to create that look where it seems as though the the lines are coming out underneath the object. More tweaking follows and I'm now moving around the composition, doing a little bit of scaling, constantly saving it out and seeing how it renders. And I'm doing more detailing, trying to see if I can push that 3D feeling just a little bit further, make the object appear a little more realistic. And next up is a great example of how we actually haven't settled on a color yet. Now we're playing around with different colors. And for this first rendering that I'll send the client, I actually end up on a dark background rather than the blue background that I've been working on for a while now. I end up using the blue for the abstract lines that come out underneath the pen and I kind of like the dynamics of having the dark background, the red popping 3D pen and then these blue gradient abstract lines. So here I'm just putting the last touches on the composition, making small adjustments and then saving it out and sending it to the client. So not totally unexpected, the client really wants to explore the blue background a little further. It is the original background and the original color from the old icon. And uh, we feel like we could give it another go and see if that would be a worthy contester. The black background might just be too much of a change really for the users. So it's a very valid concern and we spend some more time playing around with the rendering of the blue background. Now the original icon had a radial gradient, which is kind of special. And I thought that I'd at least give that a try. But we also tried variations on different angles of the gradient to see what rendered best. I quickly find out though that one of the reasons why I subconsciously went away from the blue background to begin with is that there's some issues with the contrast between the blue and the red. The pen just doesn't seem to pop enough on the blue background. And I try to fix that by adding some fringy lighting and playing around with the physicality of it. You'll see me add a lot of bevel, a lot of inner shadow here. You'll see me upping the contrast a little bit in many different small but important ways. 
Once I'm done with the last detailing, I start to put together the presentation for the client with three variations on the blue background. And while I'm doing that, I suddenly find out that I hate the tip, that the tip could be made a lot better. So I jump back in, do the revisions to the tip of the pen, and then save out the three variations again and send those to the client. After some back and forth and some user testing, we actually decide to do three variations of the icon and deliver all of those. The blue one, the dark one, and the light one. After a lot of soul searching and a bunch more emails, we actually land on the dark variation as the one that we're gonna go forward with. It scales better, it has better contrast, and there's actually something about the dark color that makes it feel a little more like a pro tool. It is quite different from the original icon we set out to redesign, but the result is a considerably sleeker and modern look that feels very much like a marriage between that abstract minimalism and that physicality and vibrantness that I like so much. Thanks for watching this episode of Design With Me. If you have thoughts or you want to see more like this, leave a comment in the field below or share this video with some of your friends. And be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.